Okay, this video is going to look at the circulatory system. This is the last dot point for the critical question. How do the musculoskeletal and cardiorespiratory systems of the body influence and respond to movement? Your syllabus for this dot point asks you to know about the components of blood, the structure and function of the heart, arteries, veins, and capillaries. You need to know uh, the pulmonary and systemic circulation, and you also need to know about blood pressure. Your learn two asks you to analyze movement of blood through the body and the influence of the circulatory and respiratory systems of move on movement efficiency and performance. So let's start with the components of blood. There are four basic components of blood. The first is the erythrocytes, also known as red blood cells, and they contain hemoglobin and are responsible uh, for the transport of oxygen, but also in the breaking down of carbon dioxide and a few other things that happen in your blood. Uh, we next have leukocytes. Now leukocytes are white blood cells and they are involved in your immune system. They fight against disease, they clean up debris uh, and they help keep your blood clean essentially. Uh, you then have thrombocytes which are better known as platelets and these are responsible for clotting your blood whenever there's a break in any kind of blood vessel. Um, the thrombocytes or platelets will go and they will provide the clot and help uh, begin the repairing process uh, that's involved in fixing the cell walls. And then we also have the plasma. Now plasma is of course the largest section of your blood uh, and it's a mixture of water and protein and it's essentially responsible for the transportation of most nutrients. So that's oxygen, uh, sugars, all kinds of things that are moving around in your blood. Uh, it's most of it's gonna be transported in your plasma. Okay, so now we're gonna have a look at the structure of a, all these various things. So we're gonna start with the heart. You can see here, uh, that we have a left and a right atrium, which then flows down into a left and a right ventricle. Uh, we have at the top here an aorta. Uh, we have a superior and an inferior vena cava, which both come together at the vena cava before they come into uh, the right atrium. We have a pulmonary artery, which takes the blood to the lungs. We also have a pulmonary vein, bringing the blood back from the lungs. Uh, we have a tricuspid valve here, a mitral or bicuspid valve there. Uh, we have an aortic uh, valve here, a pulmonary valve there. We have uh, the intraventricular septum and also the myocardium, which is the muscle that makes up the heart. When we look at arteries, arteries and veins, we're gonna have a kind of a look at here together. So both of them are very similar. That's why I want to put them up here next to each other. The one thing you need to just notice is that veins are thinner and arteries are thicker. So both of them have an endothelium. Both of them have smooth muscle, although you'll notice that the muscle in the arteries is thicker. Uh, the arteries then have an elastic lamina, both an inner and an outer one. Uh, they both have an adventitia and only the veins have a valve. Now the valve, of course, is about letting blood go one way and not another. So in the heart and in the veins, uh, it's about letting the blood go in one direction when a contraction happens, whether that be from skeletal muscle or from the myocardial muscle. Uh, that contraction that occurs uh, allows the blood to go one direction, the valve will then close to prevent the blood from coming back. Uh, we finally, we're going to have a very quick look at capillaries here. They have an endothelium, they have a basal lamina, and they have, uh, which is, and the endothelium is essentially made up of parasite. So uh, that's our basic structure of each of those things. We now have a look at some of the functions of these things. So the function of the heart is to pump blood around the body. Arteries take blood away from the heart and also are involved slightly in helping pump that blood a bit further. Veins are responsible for bringing blood back towards the heart. And capillaries, of course, are thin and porous in order to allow for the exchange of gases, nutrients, and then all waste products, okay? Uh, so that's our function of each of those sections. Let's talk about the pulmonary and the systemic circulation. Now the pulmonary circulation takes blood from the heart to the lungs and then back again, okay? So your uh, right ventricle is going to contract. It's going to pump blood out of the pulmonary artery uh, it's going to go to the lungs, it's going to be oxygenated, it's going to have the carbon dioxide removed. The pulmonary vein will then bring that blood back to the heart, fill up the left atrium. Uh, the left ventricle will then get uh, filled up from the atrium. When the left ventricle contracts, it's going to go through the aorta and travel to the whole body, both the head uh, and, the, and the body. So some blood will go up and the rest of it will go down. Uh, we're then going to have that blood get uh, deoxygenated at all the body cells. Uh, so carbon dioxide is going to go in and oxygen is going to go out. 
Uh, we're then going to have that blood come back to the heart via the vena cava. So uh, the superior vena cava will bring the blood back from the head. The inferior vena cava is going to bring body back from, blood back from the body. They're going to join together into the vena cava and then dump the blood into the right atrium, which then allows them we'll, in the contraction will put blood into the left, uh, the right ventricle to then be pumped around to the pulmonary artery again. And the process just continues to repeat itself over and over again. So it's really important for you to remember the pulmonary system is all about the lungs, your pulmonary arteries, your pulmonary veins. Uh, it's all about going to the lungs and back. The systemic circulation is all about your body and getting blood to your head, to your limbs, uh, to all of your vital organs. Finally, we have to have a look at blood pressure. Now, blood pressure is a measure of the pressure the heart exerts on the arteries uh, when it pumps and causes the blood to move around. Uh, ideally, you want your blood pressure to be below uh, 120 on 80, uh, but obviously not too low. Uh, you don't want to drop down below, let's say, 80 on 60 or something. Uh, during aerobic exercise, systolic pressure goes up, as you can see in the graph here, uh, and the diastolic pressure goes down just slightly. A similar graph looking at resistance training or strength training, you see that the pressure goes up and down, uh, and this up is when you're lifting the weight, and the down is when you are allowing the weight, the weight to lower. So you can see the pressure go up and down uh, with each contraction. Now, the circulatory system and the respiratory system's response and involvement with uh, movement efficiency, essentially, your circulatory system is all about uh, transporting that oxygen to your uh, muscles when they need it and removing the carbon dioxide. So as soon as your muscles start to be used, they produce lots of carbon dioxide. Your body realizes and transports that carbon dioxide to your lungs uh, and gets rid of it. It gets more oxygen and takes it to your muscles. Because you're starting to produce more carbon dioxide, you may also produce some lactic acid. Uh, but your body's going, that, that carbon dioxide is going to set off a trigger within your body that causes your heart rate to go up and causes your respiration rate to go up as well. So that, that really is going to allow for better movement efficiency because you're now going to get more airflow, greater amounts of oxygen into your body, uh, better transport of that oxygen around your body. You're going to have faster removal of carbon dioxide and other waste products uh, from, from your muscle cells into your blood and then you're going to have that carbon dioxide removed uh, by your lungs a lot faster in your expiration. And so the, the increase in your heart rate and in your respiratory rate is actually really vital for your movement efficiency. If that increase doesn't happen, uh, you're not going to be able to continue to do movement.